إن الحمد لله الحمد لله الذي خلق فسوى وقدر فهدى الرحمن على العرش استوى يدبر الأمر من الأرض إلى السماء إن في ذلك لآيات لأول النهى وأشهد أن لا إله إلا الله وحده لا شريك له الولي الأعلى وأشهد أن نبينا وسيدنا محمدا عبد الله ورسوله خاطبه ربه بقوله ولا سوف يعطيك ربك فترضى وصلوات الله وسلامه عليه صلاة وسلاما دائمين وعلى آله وأصحابه وأزواجه وذريته أولي النهى ومصابيح في الدجا والتابعين ومن تبعهم بإحسان إلى يوم التلاق أعوذ بالله من الشيطان الرجيم يا أيها الذين آمنوا اتقوا الله حق تقاته ولا تموتن إلا وأنتم مسلمون يا أيها الذين آمنوا اتقوا الله وآمنوا برسوله يؤتكم كفلين من رحمته ويجعل لكم نورا تمشون به ويغفر لكم والله غفور رحيم يا أيها الذين آمنوا اتقوا الله وقولوا قولا سديدا يصلح لكم أعمالكم ويغفر لكم ذنوبكم ومن يطع الله ورسوله فقد فاز فوزا عظيما أما بعد From our inception, we faced a mighty and formidable foe, one that despises us and spares no effort to bring us woe. That enemy discovered an insurmountable weakness in the human being, a weakness that plagues us all from the first to the last of us living. In the beginning, Iblis became our avowed enemy, promising to misguide, distract, and cause us misery, and also sowing the seeds of disbelief, discord, malice, and hate, so that we will all follow him into his infernal fate. The first weakness to emerge in the human being was forgetfulness, brought about by irresolution and sometimes willful blindness. But our Lord Allah Most High has promised us forgiveness and thus whenever we forget and err, all we need to do is turn to him in repentance. For all the things in life that we will forget, Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala has made two that will in our hearts be kept so that dozens of times a day you and I will always be reminded of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala and his messenger sallallahu alayhi wa sallam in a majestic tandem. Brothers and sisters, not long after Allah created Adam, he forgot a command of Allah as Allah states in Surah Faha, Ayah 115, A'udhu Billahi Minashaitan Rajeem. Allah said, We took a covenant from Adam before, but then he forgot. And we did not find him to be resolute. What did Adam forget? Simple command from Allah. وَلَا تَقْرَبَ هَذِهِ الشَّجَرَةَ فَتَكُونَ مِنَ الظَّالِمِينَ Allah says, don't approach this tree, you and your wife. If not, you'll become wrongdoers. Allah also told Adam about Iblis. إِنَّ هَذَا عَدُوُّ لَكَ وَلِزَوْجِكَ فَلَا يُخْرِجَنَّكُمَا مِنَ الْجَنَّةِ فَتَشْقَى Iblis is your enemy, you and your wife. Don't let him be the cause of you being ousted. And yet they hearken to the words of Iblis. 
So human beings are prone to forget, brothers and sisters. And Allah promises in the Quran that as part of our life cycle, we said, when you grow old, you are more prone to forget. And to the point you don't even know anything. To lose all that you knew. Subhanallah. My dear respected brothers and sisters, if we are to forget everything, almost, we don't forget everything, but if you have Alzheimer's, you almost forget everything. Then how will you spend a lifetime remembering the one that created you? Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. And also, where did you get this message from Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala? It is only through his messenger sallallahu alayhi wa sallam. Brothers and sisters, if they ask you, any non-Muslim, say, tell me, friend, what does it take to become a Muslim? We have the quick, ready-made answer. Even a child knows that you say the shahada. So to become a Muslim, you testify, ashhadu an la ilaha illallah wa ashhadu anna muhammadan rasulullah. You bear witness that there's none worthy of worship, no deity except Allah, and that Prophet Muhammad sallallahu alaihi wasallam is his messenger. Dear respected brothers and sisters, to be a Muslim sounds easy if you think that being a Muslim is just to accept the idea of a shahada, to accept the idea of the oneness of Allah, that's enough. And to accept the idea that his messenger, sallallahu alayhi wasallam, was commissioned. But brothers and sisters, if it were so easy, Iblis will never win. If it were so easy, every human being will enter Jannah. But Allah told Iblis, وَلَكِنْ حَقَّ الْقَوْلُ مِنِّي with anger, Allah told Iblis, I made a promise, I will fill up Jahannam with every human being and every jinn. Ajma'in. So being a Muslim is not easy because to recognize the oneness of Allah and act upon it takes work. Because to recognize that Prophet Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam is the messenger takes work. Because when you recognize that Allah is one, it means you must trust and rely upon Allah for everything. And when you recognize that the Prophet Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam is the messenger, it means that you must obey him in everything. And that is what people are unable to do submission the difficulty in islam is in the submission ya ayyuhal ladhina amanu udkhulu fi silmi kafa allah says enter into submission wholeheartedly completely means you have to put your desires aside for what allah has commanded that you must turn to allah for help and not necessarily to the creation. Brothers and sisters, the problem we have in the 21st century, everybody says, me, I, I know, I am wealthy, I am powerful, I. And when you do that, there is no Allah in your mind. That is why Qarun said, innama utituhu ala ilmin indi. I am wealthy because I'm smart. He forgot to refer rizq to Allah. It's an issue of Iman. So brothers and sisters, we can say we believe in Allah until you act upon that Islam is not complete. And to say you believe that the Prophet وسلم, is the message of Allah, you must obey him in all matters. That is why Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala made it a condition of faith. Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala states, 
in the Quran. Qul ati'u Allah wa rasul Allah says, say, you must obey Allah and his messenger. Fa in tawallaw. If you refuse, fa inna Allah la yuhibbu al-kafirin. It is an act of kufr to disobey the messenger sallallahu alayhi wa sallam. Allah made it part of Quran. So that way you understand what it means. Wa anna Muhammadan Rasulullah. Allah states in an illa li'ta'a Allah says, I have never sent any messenger, but that he must be obeyed by Allah's permission. And he states in the same place, فَلَا وَرَبِّكَ لَا يُؤْمِنُونَ حَتَّى يُحَكِّمُوكَ فِي مَا شَجَرَ بَيْنَهُمْ ثُمَّ لَا يَجِدُوا فِي أَنفُسِهِمْ حَرَجًا مِمَّا قَضَيْتْ وَيُسَلِّمُوا تَسْلِيمًا Allah says, none of us believe until we refer all our matters to his messenger, sallallahu alayhi wa sallam, and we accept whatever ruling he gives wholeheartedly without feeling any issue in your heart. That's what it takes to accept that the Prophet وسلم, is the messenger of Allah. But we forget. So how does Allah want you to remember him and his messenger? In the shahada, you mention Allah and his messenger. You always say the shahada in almost all the acts of worship of the day. In every salah, when you make wudu, you invoke Allah. When you end, you give the shahada. In this adhan of Surah of Salat al Jumu'ah, you hear the shahadatain several times. And even in the salah, you will have to have mentioned it Allah and His Messenger. You might say, Brother, I have never seen the shahada in the Quran. I will say to you, Brother or sister, you don't read the book of Allah and you certainly don't remember. The shahada is mentioned in the, in the Quran. I don't want to spoil it for you. Check out Surah Al Baqarah and Surah Al An'am. And you said, but what about the messenger sallallahu alayhi wa sallam? He's only mentioned in the Quran five times by name, four times as Muhammad, once as Ahmad. I will say to you, dear brother or sister, you're not paying attention to the Quran. For Prophet Muhammad sallallahu alayhi wa sallam was mentioned nearly 1,000 times in the Quran. And if time has permitted, I would give you 100 before you leave here today. But I don't have time. You will scratch your head and say, how is that so? Every time Allah mentions his messenger, he mentions him generally as second person singular. You, your, that's how you find him. When, the, when Allah says in the Quran, Qul, who is he telling Qul? The Prophet Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam. When Allah says, Rabbika, who's Lord? The Lord of Muhammad Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam. Allah wanted you to mention his messenger when you mentioned him. Because Allah promised the messenger this fadl when he states, Allah says, I will elevate your mention till the end of time. People will say your name. They will remember you. Angels will say his name and remember him. You want to know why? In Al Ahsab, Allah states, Inna Allah wa malaikatahu yusalluna ala nabi. Ya ayu aladina amanu, sallu alayhi wa sallimu taslima. Allahumma salli wa sallim wa barik ala Muhammad wa ala ali Muhammad. Kama sallayta wa sallamta wa barakta ala Ibrahim wa ala ali Ibrahim. Ma inna ka hamidun majid. One creation of Allah to be remembered by all of his creation. So special. That Allah said, وَمَا أَرْسَلْنَاكَ إِلَّا رَحْمَةً لِلْعَالَمِينَ I sent you as a mercy to the world. You say, brother, we only have one world. Allah says they are worlds. The worlds of Al-Ins and Al-Jinn and Al-Malaika and Jannah. These are all worlds. They're not in the same place. Well, how do we know that the Prophet Sallallahu was sent to the Jinn? Allah tells us in the Quran, in Surah Al-Jinn and Surah um, Al-Ahqaf, Allah says, we dispatched a group of jinn to go listen to the Quran. And then they went back to become warners from the Prophet Even the jinn received the message of Islam and they become Muslim. Jinn are telling us in Surah Al-Jinn, they're speaking, saying, Whoever becomes a Muslim who submits to Allah, 
you're on the straight path. A jinn says that to you and I. Subhanallah. The Prophet Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam achieved the highest status of all beings created that actually have free will and intellect and desires. And that is why Allah Subhanahu Wa Ta'ala took him up, uh, uh, up high to show him the creation and to show him all the things that nobody has ever seen. Brothers and sisters, have you ever wondered why did Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala created human beings when statistically, as according to the hadith, one out of every thousand will succeed and 999 will fail? Not one percent, one tenth of a percent will succeed and 99.99 .99 will fail. None of us in dunya will go to any endeavor that has a 99.99 .99 failure rate. You wanna know why Allah created human beings? Let me offer you my opinion based on Quran and all that I know. Because Allah knew that one of them will be the most excellent of his creation. That is why Allah chose Prophet Muhammad sallallahu alaihi wasallam. وَرَبُّكَ يَخْلُقُ مَا يَشَاءُ وَيَخْتَارُ He created what he wants and he chose Muhammad sallallahu alaihi wasallam from the entire creation. Surah Al-Qasas. Read where Allah says, I chose him to be the best of all things. That's why I sent him as a rahmah for the world. Because if I didn't send him, Allah is saying, I will destroy the world. There's no need for this dunya anymore. Subhanallah. What about Jannah? You know what Allah says about Jannah? You know, we think about Jannah through this best and most beautiful place. Allah tells us that one of the reasons why he has Jannah is for the pleasure of the Prophet Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam. When he said to him, when I saw for you, take Allah says, I'm going to give you something that you would be pleased with. Before that, the akhirah is best for you. That's why there's one place in Jannah that is the best of the best hadith of the Prophet. Sallam, that is what Al Wasilata is. He said, Ask Allah that I get it. Although Allah showed him that he will get it. The humbleness of the Messenger, sallallahu alayhi wasallam, a human 100%, but worships Allah like a malak, 100%. That is why Allah praised him in Quran. He doesn't speak of just his whims and desires. In huwa illa wahyu yuha. Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala prays his mental state. You're not crazy. Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala swore by his life. Allah tells us that the Prophet sallallahu alayhi wa sallam is the best example for all of us. Brothers and sisters, in order for your Islam to be complete, you must not only believe in Allah and worship Him, you must rely and trust in Allah. Likewise, you must believe in the Messenger Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam and follow him in all matters of deen. And thus, brothers and sisters, I would like to remind myself and you that Allah states in the Quran that if you disobey his Messenger Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam, and before I make that point, if you notice in the Quran, whenever Allah Subhanahu Wa Ta'ala says people go to Jahannam, they'll go there forever which means a long time is an extremely long time 
So long, Allah says, As long as the heavens and the earths have existed, that's long. That's in the hundreds of trillions of years, scientific terms. But he never says abada, which would mean no possibility of parole forever and ever, except in three places in Quran. When Allah says people go to Jahannam, they never come back out. One of them is in Surah Al-Jinn. Allah says, some people, those who disobey the messenger will enter Jahannam and will never come out because it destroys your shahada if you don't obey the messenger sallallahu alayhi wa sallam. Allah made it a requirement in Quran that you must obey the messenger. And I want to conclude by telling you something special about the Prophet Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam to Allah, not to you and I. We only have hypocritical love of the Prophet Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam. We ask Allah to give us true love of his messenger. Listen to what the Prophet means to the Allah himself. There are a few things Allah does for the, for the sake of the Prophet Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam. One of them, this Qibla that you and I face from anywhere in the world, that Qibla, when Allah changed it, he said about his messenger, Surah Al-Baqarah, ayah number 144. He says, I'm going to give you a qibla that you are pleased with. He did it for the Prophet Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam because he kept looking to his Lord for change. Allah said, I'm doing it because of you. Look at that, brothers and sisters, how much Allah Subhanahu Wa Ta'ala loves his messenger, Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam. And that is why, again, Allah Subhanahu Wa Ta'ala made the pleasure of the Prophet Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam the reason why he does other things in the Quran. Allah says, Allah says, I'm going to bless you with so many things until you're pleased with it. Subhanallah. Imagine Allah telling a human being, I'm, I'm doing this for you. Jannah, I created the best part of Jannah for you, Muhammad sallallahu alayhi wa sallam. Because of you, I will save people from Jahannam sallallahu alayhi wa sallam. That's the reason why Allah does things. You must love and respect the messenger sallallahu alayhi wa sallam and obey him. Don't spend once a year a party to celebrate him. That is not love and obedience. That is a show. As you know, every year in Rabi al Awal, people celebrate the birth of the Prophet. I will give you this interesting nugget. If you notice from Ulul Azm, Prophet Muhammad, Prophet Isa ibn Maryam, and Prophet Musa, all three of them, their mothers gave birth to them when no one was around. Haven't you noticed that? Maryam alayhi salam gave birth somewhere. She's there by herself. Only Allah attended to her. Musa's mother gave birth in secret so that nobody even knows she was pregnant and that she delivered. And Prophet Muhammad sallallahu alayhi wa mother was pretty much by herself. Nobody knows when any of these anbiya were born for a reason. Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala doesn't want you to focus on the birthday. Allah wants you to focus that he selected them as messengers to mankind. And the only clear path to Jannah, difficult road, is by obeying Allah and his messenger, sallallahu alayhi wa sallam. Jalla alladhi ba'atha rasoola lana rahima liyaruddana fil mi'ad jahima wa bihi lana jannatan wa na'ima. أضحى على المولى الكريم كريما يا أيها الراجون منه شفاعة صلوا عليه وسلموا تسليما اللهم صل وسلم وبارك على محمد وعلى آل محمد كما صليت وسلمت وبارك على إبراهيم وعلى آل إبراهيم إنك حميد مجيد اللهم اهدنا في من هديت وعافنا في من عافيت وتولنا في من توليت وبارك لنا في ما أعطيت وقنا شر ما قضيت فإنك تقضي بالحق ولا يقضى عليك إنه لا يدل من واليت 
ولا يعز من عديت تبارك ربنا وتعاليت لك الحمد على ما قضيت ولك الشكر على ما أنعمت به وأوليت نستغفرك اللهم من جميع الذنوب والخطايا ونتوب إليك لا ملجأ ولا منجا منك إلا إليك اللهم اقسم لنا من خشيتك ما تحول به بيننا وبين معصيتك ومن طاعتك ما تبلغنا بها جنتك ومن اليقين ما تهون به علينا مصائب الدنيا وما تعنا اللهم بأسماعنا وأبصارنا وقواتنا أبدا ما أحييتنا وجعله الوارث منا وجعل ثأرنا على من ظلمنا وانصرنا على من عادانا ولا تجعل مصيبتنا في ديننا ولا تجعل الدنيا أكبر همنا ولا مبلغ علمنا ولا إلى النار مصيرنا وجعل الجنة هي دارنا وقرارنا ولا تسلط علينا في ذنوبنا من لا يخافك فينا ولا يرحمنا برحمتك يا رحم الراحمين اللهم عز الإسلام والمسلمين وانصر الإسلام والمسلمين واغفر لجميع موت المسلمين يا عزيز يا كريم ربنا آتنا في الدنيا حسنة وفي الآخرة حسنة وقنا عذاب النار اللهم أجلنا من النار وإنا نسألك جنة الفردوس الأعلى وجعلنا من الذين يدخلونها بغير حساب ولا عذاب يا عزيز يا غفار اللهم إنا نعوذ بك من البرس والجنون والجدام ومن سيء الأسقام اللهم إنا نعوذ بك من زوال نعمتك وتحول عافيتك وفجاءة نقمتك وجميع سقطك سبحان ربك رب العزة عما يصفون وسلام على المرسلين والحمد لله رب العالمين وأقيم الصلاة فإن الصلاة تنهى عن الفحشاء والمنكر ولذكر الله أكبر والله يعلم ما تصنعون Thank you.